Well, should we, uh, I guess we won't go with an intro today because we have. The, yeah, let's yeah. just roll Bridge. right into it. Let's see, it's a line. Will yep. it let us? <laughs> now I gotta make sure to mute this. Mute. Yes. Let's yeah. just roll yep. right into it. There we go. Well, what's up, guys? Oh Hello my goodness, everybody. so good to see you guys tonight. Um, tonight we have the pleasure of a couple of special guests, Governor Song and Shanna Mora. Thank you guys Hi. so much Whoa. for coming out. Um, they both game on the Gung Ho Network. I know Shanna Mora does art design as well. Um, on your way to it's Marvel Shana. and DC. Excuse me, Shanna. Uh, on your way to Marvel and DC, right? Am I right? Yeah, yeah that's what I like to hear, guys. So welcome. Thank you for coming and joining Thank us you. tonight. Thank, Thank you, you very much, us. guys. Yeah. yeah Would you course. like to uh, introduce yourselves, maybe give an, a, your own personal introduction to uh, the people on our channel who may not know you yet? Please, go ahead. Okay. Um, hi, guys. I'm Shauna Mora, and I am a freelance artist aiming to be a DC or a Marvel artist. And I game, and I create things for people, and I go to conventions, and I try to do it all as much as possible. I'm part of Red Team Go, this wonderful art community. But um, yeah, awesome. that's who I am. And I'm Governor, Governor of Songen. I went to art school in uh, Florida, at G-Star School of the Arts, and I learned from a lot of really uh, pe people that really did this for a living in film. I took uh, four years of acting, three years of film, two years of TV production, a few years of film business, and I'm just trying to make that into a career for myself by uh, doing video gaming on YouTube, where I am um, doing editing for that. I'm doing a lot of the uh, vocal works. I've, I'm writing, I'm doing this comic book with Shauna right now, which is really oh, looking wow. really cool. That's and uh, awesome. we're, we're working on some animations as well for the YouTube channel. Wow, nice. that's I'm, great. I, I cannot wait to see yeah. the animations. Uh, between the two, that's gonna be some great stuff. I just know it. I can, I can already <laughs> tell. Like, I, I don't need any forewarning or, or ideas. It's just gonna be great. Uh, speaking of we, uh, you know, of your work specifically, we talked about earlier, and I'd actually seen some posts from uh, Shanna earlier. I think probably yesterday, the day before, about uh, your kind of updating some of your previous lines of your work, uh, specifically yes. the Undertale series, right? Well, I'm working on the Undertale sticker series currently. Ooh. I'm going to go through and add more things to fandoms I currently do artwork for, as well as add more stuff, like more fandoms and more artwork. I'm going to get into the comic book action series. I'm going to get into just a whole bunch of different stuff. It's going to be a huge lineup. Basically, uh, Shauna is one of those artists that I, I, I cannot fathom how she manages to do it, but every three months she has a completely new and updated style, and it's just so wow. much better than she was previously. I don't know what and, happens, it just does. That's <laughs> awesome, that's, that's a magical cool. thing, that's, that's great. Growth. So the thing is, is at Denver Comic Con, uh, we were actually interviewing and asking a lot of questions to a lot of the people that were stopping at our booth, and asking oh. what they would like to see at our booth. So uh, Shauna was taking a lot of that to heart, and working on a lot of really cool new items that people will be able to get that was fan requested by the con members that actually went there and it's going to be with her new updated style and artwork quality which is incredible if you hold up all, uh, last year's stuff that just happened a month ago just to the stuff that she's currently drawing for next year and future cons it is a vastly higher quality vastly amazing di dynamic posing it's really cool should i show wow. you yes. the stickers yes. sure if yes. you really please, show. please yeah please. Like, give us yeah. A, give us an update we'd yeah love we'd love to see some stuff um so anyway but yeah uh if you have any questions or anything um, I actually, that you know, we've gotten now the update kind of on what Shanna's doing and her, you know, general direction. So now I want to get more of an update on you, on you. and the Gung Ho Game Network. And, you know, the you, we'd also talked about in our interview, which it, it's not live, unfortunately, for public. We had to save it for our Patreon members just because the audio wasn't quite good on our end. Your That's end was great. You guys were awesome. You know, you, you hit the she, mark 100%. I was all off cue. Uh, and it's the she's left. got the new stickers. Oh, oh man. She's, let's, see, let's check them out. So, so from, for Undertale. From Undertale, the Skeleton Brothers. Oh, wow. uh, oh my goodness. And, I, you know, I saw these the other day. Like I said, I've, I follow her posts now, but they're so nice live to see the difference. So that cool. it's there's yeah, There's little, there's little to no crazy. difference from the digital print to that live printing of the digital. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
and that's so I just don't nice. Pose some of these. Uh, because before, a lot of the stickers that she had done were uh, just generic poses for the characters, but now she's really getting into more dynamic action poses. Yeah, so this is going to be something really cool. Up, like if you like the battle aspect of this game, you're going to love this whole. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I I like that you have a lot of that ambient action. For example, I see the bone movement in that one. You know what I mean? Uh, even the the care. Yeah, Ooh, you can there see. You, go. you know, what I mean the. That the that it's very uh, classic comic book style and go. like so depictive and cool to see in a sticker. You know what I mean? You wouldn't see that. Oh, and like yeah, even there, just the 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 action of that pose. You know what I mean? Yeah, it makes it right. So good. And the outline, the shape oh, of the sticker goodness. is amazing. But stuff similar to that, actiony, dynamic, all that good stuff. That's even if so it isn't good. battle poses, right? They're still gonna be super dynamic. Right, and, and, and perfect size for the back of a phone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that they're so cool for that. I love putting them that on my phone. My laptop's a big one. You know, I go around with it everywhere, so I like to have it pop. Uh, shoot, I I used to put a bunch on my truck, but then I learned that the weather, you know, you shouldn't do that yeah. with ones yeah. you really like. So. Now I, I reserve them all for my personal workspace, including uh, the, I still have that set. I actually hung on to the set of bookmarks I got from you guys at Comic-Con. Oh, so you nice. decided to hang on? Okay, hold on a minute, I told him about you. No, no, so check this out, check this out, Shauna. So he brings out, he brings all these awesome bookmarks, by the way. Those were fantastic. Oh. Brings a couple of pieces back to the, back to our little studio here. And I gave, you know, I gave him all away as prizes. You Which know, I'm like, awesome. you know, check out Shauna Mora. Um, I passed him along to a lot of our viewers. And so you got a lot of them here and didn't even give me one. Didn't even give me one. You asked for the one. No, you said I gave, I swear <laughs> I gave you the Shana blue. Said. They were so fantastic. I wanted to the just keep the book. Yeah, she has, they, they've actually offered me the last set. I think I'm going to pick nice, them up. Nice. I'll give them to you. <laughs> Especially because I also picked up the print of the set that, uh, the, at the con two that was, so nice as just the print of all of them. Mm. So beautiful. that way, that way I knew. That way, if yeah. you did see, you've been holding no, out. No, no I out. swear, I swear, because I even told them that you grabbed one from me. I swear, maybe you gave it away with the prizes. No, I gave them all away, I like you said. We were, right, we had agreed right. to give I them away. I forgot about what you said that we were giving them because I, because originally you were just like, I want this one. I was like, all right, you have it. But then I got to get the yeah, rest the of the flash them one was, was so 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 good. Yeah, the that, flash, I, like I said, I told you that was the one was fantastic. I did give it away due to our agreement, but fantastic. All right, fantastic it's all right. I got work. some at the house. I'll, I'll, I will reluctantly give you some of my set again <laughs> because yeah, I can't well, stand it. Too. I, so you uh, might yeah. be getting some better stuff. You That's know. That's true. So. She's and and you were telling me you were doing new. Uh, yeah. Sure, we could talk about that. We can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna love this. Um, we are playing around with inks and trying to get our hands on the... Uh, we're still figuring this out. It's in the prototype stages. But we're going to be making a limited line of five different really cool <laughs> posters. And these posters are going to be done entirely in a UV black light poster. What? That's awesome. That'll be yeah. awesome. Because you don't see those a lot at all. Like, I, I know... No, I may be seen one or two and never, like... To be anything honest, that I, I want, you know what I mean. I haven't seen anything in the genre mm -hmm. stuff that I want to see. I see them at like maybe a nightclub, or well, I d I deal with a lot of shady people. Gonna there be you go. Oh my black ones. <laughs> There's, they're going. Oh, can I, can I give them? Go for so, it. Okay, I gotta ask permission. On <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Yeah, we get it. Um, Oogie Boogie Nightmare for Christmas. Uh, Audrey Two from Little Shop of Horrors. Oh. Wow. <sighs> Uh, Rick and Morty. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. So good to hear. <laughs> Should have saved that one for yeah. last. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's so good. Expansion from Mario. Oh wow. Expansion from Mario and Beetlejuice. Yes. Fantastic Beetlejuice. lineup. Those are yeah. those are all and, and, great ones that I would love and, to see and would be great for. And those are the five that we're going to be doing that way. Sean is going to be working really and hard it's on. It's going to be a limited run, but it's going to be so cool. We're going to do upgrades and like updates as soon as we About start getting that going. About fifteen of each, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, boom, gone. That's crazy. That is insane. That's awesome, though. I love those titles, especially for the idea, like, great choices. For the black light idea? Yeah, yeah especially, I love the, uh, I, like, as much as I love Rick and Morty, I think that, I, especially for the idea of the Nightmare, the Nightmare Before Christmas and Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice are going to come out toppers. amazing. I'm yeah. sure they're all amazing, but I just can't wait to see those ones in specific, like, you know, I, I, I can only imagine. What kind of inspired that idea for the black light poster? 
Black light rocks? <laughs> also, there you go. Oh my <laughs> yeah, god. Boom. You hardly see any nerd cave stuff. You, you see a lot of really cool regular posters, but you don't see black light very often. Oh, I yeah, like that most, name. Right. Straight from the nerd cave. Yeah. Oh, so we're doing this for like nerd cave stuff, for like cafes, for like that deep dark room stuff, because we're all like uh, dungeon. Basement dwellers. We all play video games. Yeah. We need those lights off. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. All right, and so now that we've covered a little bit about who you guys are and what you do, uh, at least in the general sense, we we do run a very interactive podcast, as you both know. You've uh, you've come to the cast, and we appreciate it greatly. So we want to just take a sec to say hi to everyone and maybe bridge into these kind of genres that you're working in and see maybe what our what you know they think of that where and maybe you know to give them the information where they can get it all that stuff as we like just interact you know what i mean so yeah yeah, we're gonna say special hellos to cy kennedy uh Susie marie and tyler lockridge and they're all here they are always all here thank you guys so much (laughs) they're our patrons and uh, they literally support us and give us the ability to do any of this stuff oh yeah i mean they're they're the they they tied the boat like they pretty much and honestly they're especially after the last couple months they're helping fund like our prize and stuff and that's really nice so Mm -hmm. we really appreciate it also izzy there izzy yeah Thanks for coming by, man. And and all of our other viewers, we appreciate you guys. We're going to be here around the clock. And so let's let's try to get into these fandoms. You said you were bridging into new areas and based on the uh, the interviews you had made at the Comic Con, right? And so I want to. I'm kind of curious as to what these are. I think we talked about a few of them when you were there, but I I just so I'm so curious because she already covers such a wide area. You know what I mean? That I, I wonder what new areas that you're going to go into, and I'm just so excited for it. Well, uh, one of the new things that we're working on, uh, I had mentioned earlier, was our comic book. And uh, it's going to be a web comic, and uh, we will be posting up for hopefully Patreon and Kickstarter. And in fact, we were actually, uh, we were actually brought up by webtoons they actually want us to go to them and pitch to them so our depending idea. on how nice. that goes awesome. we'll be going through them as well that's which is of course cool. another medium in which you can watch you can read comic books for free and help support, mm-hmm. and and help support patreon yeah uh, absolutely to help support us yeah yep that's but so... uh this comic book is something that uh became a really huge passion for us mm-hmm. about six months ago and in that time we have world built it to the point that we have blueprints for an entire yeah. city. Oh, like wow. we can fill an entire art book with what we have so far. We even scratched the surface. And yet. we're going to be releasing a press kit in uh, by the end of the year, mm-hmm. and hopefully the first issue as well. Nice. Um, awesome. Our comic is called Obsidian City, and there's a lot of purpose behind that name, but you'll have to read to understand. But basically, the way I like to initially give this off is that when you were Let's say nine, ten years old. Come on, you, you got to admit you liked Pokemon, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But here's the thing: is is that even if you still love Pokemon, as you've grown up, you may have stopped watching the show, or you've just grown out of it, mm-hmm. and you've started watching a little edgier things like maybe Sin City. Well, what if we did something okay. that was a way to merge those two aspects? Mm-hmm. Oh, geez. So that's what we're talking about. We take what you love about Pokemon and bring it into a darker, real-world setting. Wow. And that's what we're trying to do. We're going to go into a lot of different themes. It's so cool. That's awesome because a lot of, I feel like a lot of people are afraid to take the the that concept that Pokemon is kind of established and, you know, other shows have run with into the darker areas. So to see it taken there will be awesome. You know, you don't you, you just don't quite see it. Too much. We haven't given a pitch to Webtoons yet, but when we first told them about this, they thought it was really good because what they had said is that a lot of uh, young people are starting to like more and more adult, edgier themes. So as long as it's not overly R-rated, it can be a large fandom, which is really cool. And I was happy to hear that, that there is a lot of people that would like this. Absolutely. There are no shows out like that oh, right definitely. now. I mean, yeah. Pokemon has just kind of been established along with, you know, show other shows that are in this kind of monster category like Digimon right. and, and other well, and I can even say They're, they're that, kind like, of still the... ingrained in that child right. era, child age and uh, the, media. And I'll say anything that is similar to the concept is very loosely similar, nowhere near enough to make a broad connection. Just based on the, the variety of, you know, comics and manga, there's some ideas that are 
here and there, but never but the never, meeting of that, yeah, yeah, you know, no. darker edginess, you know, it's the kind like of kind of reaching out, but never really makes right. It right. Or they they loose. They're more. They're either loose on the dark side or loose on being similar to Pokemon. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They don't want to be too similar to Pokemon because they're afraid to exactly. be to take that idea and be seen as that, and there they they don't like, feel unique enough with whatever concept they have. But the, and there might be like yeah, one, yeah. two monsters well, or something like that. What Sean and I noticed was every time a new season of the show comes out, everybody has the same complaint. Why is he 10 still? <laughs> yeah, right? He's still, he's still the same age. All this time around the world. I read an article where they explained that the reason why he's still 10 years old after all this time is because that is the most identifiable age for when kids get into Pokemon. But that's the thing is, that's great for those kids that are getting into Pokemon. But what about those teenagers? Right. Where's the development about us? Kind of fans and... and Oddly enough, actually, we, our generation focuses and actually identifies more with Team Rockets. Because, right. believe it or not, Jesse and James are 14 and 16, I think. Yeah, on the yeah. wiki or something like that. It's crazy. Which I never I well, that. Well, that fast. the other thing is that they're, even their position in the, the original May is they're kind of delinquents, you know what I mean? They're not actual bad guys. They're bad guys. They like, Giovanni is the bad yeah, guy, the, and then they're like they're his and... they're his teenage group of hoodlums. You know, they don't necessarily have a job. They want to go out and make easy money and get free Pokemon without having to work for them. They're like on the lowest of the lowest. And that's not to right. assault teenagers or people our age, but that's just to say that that's like one section of people our age that it's very more identifiable than being ten years old. And you know, yeah. we're, we're we're long past ten years old, and we're long past yeah. yeah wanting necessarily all the same things that the 10 year old wants you know we have some similarities still obviously things we hold on to and cherish love our pokemon but oh, maybe yeah, definitely but i will I always... say this though um for one of our three main characters and you're actually going to be able to walk read as different issues will tell three different points of the same story and how the story is a very different perspective but uh, one of our main characters who will be the first one you're introduced to his name is oscar bishop and everybody calls him bishop now you're going to meet him when he is young when, when he, he is, is just, just now learning to become a summoner. The bright eyes will tell you. Yes, and, and he, he wants, wants to be the greatest of them all. Very, very familiar to how picking up the original game was or watching an original episode was. I mean, it's very nostalgic. But here's the thing, and I don't mind saying this because for anybody who's watching, this is going to be, I think, a really nice book is that by the end of this issue, there will be a time jump. The first issue, and there is already going to be a time jump. And you are going to watch him as he leaves Juvie. Now, what got him from, I'm going to be the greatest summoner, the champion, I'm going to, I'm going to be the very best, to my life has gone so wrong, what do I do now? That's intense. That's awesome. That's awesome. Though. Like you said, we don't see that in those kinds of situations. You don't get that full sense of gravity of real life decisions, I feel like. I feel like Pokemon is so for the 10 year olds that they, you There's know, all no the all the bad situations all, right. for us now. I, I feel right. like it's still catered to the kids so they gotta kinda keep everything Definitely. sunk but down. Hearing that this is, like you said, m even if you've never been to Juicy, the, re the relatability of being in a hard situation and not knowing oh, it's not going your way. way. Right. Yeah. And, and maybe not even necessarily your plan. You know, I, obviously who ends up planning to go to Juvie, you know. So yeah. along the way, obviously, there's been some misstep or some, mis, you know, miscalculation on one part or another or just happenstance even, which we uh, – same thing. We don't see that a lot, ha seeing happenstance and just life negatively affecting the main character and such mm – -hmm. You know, some, some people, people are, are lucky, lucky, but for others, others life, life is hard. Oh, we're gonna yes. take kid gloves off with this comic, and we're gonna have a really cool ride with this. That sounds awesome. This mm -hmm. sounds definitely like something for young adults and even adults, obviously, yeah. uh, that who can relate to that a little more closely than anything, obviously, for kids. But it and will also, it'll be a love letter to classic anime. Yeah. I mean, everything, everything you loved growing up, the nostalgia factor is going to flood Not from just this. Pokemon, there's classic summoning anime. Right, it's a love we, there's, there's so many, honestly, uh, that that are do good even even to the newer ages of, I, for, I forget what the brand newest one, I know the 
generation right before this was like Beyblade and uh, a couple others. There's, there's like a few that trickle. There are like Yu-Gi-Oh too. Yu-Gi-Oh too. Yeah, there, there's there. definitely a lot of con. Like these concepts have been done. You know what I mean? But not mm -hmm. in this uh, area or genre. Style, not yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. But I also noticed that this seems like a good time to take what everyone loves and flip it. Like, for example, uh, there's this new show out. Uh, it's, well, it's been out for a couple of years, but it's My Hero Academia. Yeah, yeah definitely. Where they take the superhero storyline and they turn it in on itself and make it this depressing but yet identifiable and beautiful growth oh, yeah. of this main character. And you wouldn't see that necessarily in Dragon Ball Z. No, no it's no. very non-typical and very... it's. It's actually so reminiscent of uh, classic American comic book storytelling yes. in that it's it's more about the development of a character and less sometimes about the action, depending on what you series know, you read, obviously. And that's what I like about stories so like good. these is that you want to see that character development. You don't want the character to be the strongest and most important right out the gate. Like, I... You, you, not everyone can identify with that. Right. You know? and, we and want and to focus, but we don't yeah. want them to be the strong, well, very it, strongest right out the gate. It, we want we, some challenges. Like I said, the, the children's... The thing about it is, like we said, for children, things can be repetitious mm -hmm. and to teach lessons. That, and, it's, and it breeds familiarity. But for adults, we look for surprise and shock. Like you said, the edge factor, something mm -hmm. to give us a little bit of either of escapism or some hyper-realism. You know what uh, I mean? One of my favorite things that I ever heard when it came to writing identifiable characters was that you may have a hero and a villain, but the villain must only ever at max be 80% villain and 20% hero, whereas the hero can only at max be 80% hero and 20% villain, because there is always that duality to everyone. Right. And if you go 100% with it, it becomes unrelatable. It's and, and, exactly. and even writing-wise, it becomes unwritable for a character to be 100% a good guy all the time. Then you can't or 100 punch a villain. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. The, the, you know, and the... I, it's just great to make a and especially relatability you know we want our villains in one of two styles one being you know utterly evil depraved I always make the comparison between the Joker and Ozymandias the Joker is evil for evil's sake but he's not necessarily a nemesis or a villain to anyone but Batman he's not the archetype, he's not relatable to a build-up. He's just scary. He's not... But I have to correct you there. The reason why he's relatable is because, as he put it, he had a bad day. That's true. Yeah. And that, that arc made his uh, progression and and character development much better once they released that entire arc and then and then the uh, the adaption into li uh, the animated movie. Yeah, so. even if you look at the book, it was uh, Alan Moore who did that one. Yeah. Uh, Killing Joke. If yep. you look at the book, 20% of the book, which again, the 80 and 20 balance, right. 20% of the book is a flashback to this helpless man. Yeah, he yeah. has no idea what he's doing and being forced into his situation. And what I like even more about even this, the relationship between Batman and the Joker is even before the Joker was... Uh, humanized during that period, he was always at least slightly em em uh, you were always able to empathize with him because he wasn't 100% a villain in the fact that it was all just a joke to him. Like you said, he still had perspective. The Joker is not necessarily the villain in his own story. You know what I mean? He's just having fun. He's, He's the, the victim, victim in his story. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, but then again, he likes to remember it one way or... Well, <laughs> and then <laughs> that's why it's, it, it, it is. But I, like I said, I always liked it because... Well, and the Killing Joke's great... Or not the Killing Joke. Uh, the, the Joker's origin story is great for that because even during the flashback, I can't remember what it is, but the, he j makes a joke and Batman laughs. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not just... I don't a, that joke word for word. It's pretty it's intense. It's good. It's... Uh, it's Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, man. Yeah, you remember it. I'd love to hear uh, it. Put me off the spot. No, it's just, I was loving that joke in my mind. Um, <laughs> so there's these two inmates at an asylum, and they see one night they're going to get free. So they go up to the rooftop, and once they get to the rooftop, they see miles of stretching rooftops, and they think if they can just get to the next one, they're home free. Now, the first guy, he makes the jump no problem. But the, but the second, second guy, guy, you see the second, second guy, guy, he won't, won't do it. it. He's, He's afraid, afraid of the fall. So the, the first, first guy says, well, how about this? I'll shine my flashlight across. 
and you can walk across the beam and meet me here. And the second guy says, do you think I'm crazy? You just turn it off halfway. Oh man, that is that is pretty Ooh. much that is a word for word on that joke. That's a great one. I had forgotten. I'm glad you remember, man. It's so good to hear that one. I uh, I really like I said. I just love that dynamic and interaction. Like you said, no villain is entirely villainous. No hero is entirely heroic. And and when they point those out, I feel like those stories are sometimes the best stories. Uh, I'm trying to remember my favorite DC version of that. It was the Doctor Light debacle, and I can't remember the actual arc that happens in when they. Uh, where they have stumped. the where they had Doctor Light's personality changed and memory erased after he raped Sue Dibney, I believe, or Jeez. yeah, Elastic Man's wife, I believe. What? I yeah, know. this is a whole it's a whole crazy thing, and they would they they, they brainwash Batman too because he wow. wouldn't have stood for it. Uh, and I can't remember exactly who and how they did it. I think it was either Zatanna or uh. John Jones, but it's it's a I would I mean I now probably I probably one think. of my favorite examples of like that eighty twenty rule is when going back to when Barry uh, Barry Allen actually had to make the decision Ooh. to kill Zoom. I think going back to that or Thon, excuse me. I think going back to that, it's like at the end of the day, we all have to make those decisions, and sometimes the hero has to make the bad decision or the antagonistic decision. Jeez. But it shows that they do have that twenty percent in them that that. You can't always be a hero 100% of the time. And I think a lot of the regular media tries to portray that, especially child uh, childhood media. Yeah, and uh, there's a lot of shonen animes that do that as well. What are you looking up there? I was looking up the thing. It's called Identity Crisis. Oh, wow. I'll have to check that out, man. Yeah, it's, it's a retro one I've never heard Identity of. Crisis. Identity Crisis. I'm oh, sorry, Identity Crisis. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my pronunciation not always on point, but that one is a. Uh, it's definitely just an interesting example of, and obviously retrospective as a lot of those kinds of things are, but it does add a level of character to the league that then you can give them, like you said, you humanize them, you make them fallible, you make them relatable. Mm -hmm. Where it's uh, there was a recent issue actually of Superman that just just came out in Rebirth that does a very good job of it, where he's like comes home. Exhausted, and he just passes out while he's flying and hits the ground. Oh, it's that right, and nice. it's it, the whole quotes too. I think he's just like, you know, everyone assumes Superman doesn't get tired, but even I the man still yeah, gets he's tired. Like, even the man <laughs> still has to sleep. And I thought that was such a great little humanizing thing that makes him so much more relatable, much better hero. I think that's why I loved All Might from. Uh, yes. 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 yes, yes. It was like. So weakness is so perfect, perfect yes. for that type of hero because he is definitely like this Thor, this Superman oh, right? of his world. But yet the weakness that he has, which I don't want to say for anybody who hasn't picked it up yet, right. is just so perfect. The writing is amazing. The, the writing on the entire series, honestly, so far, and even into currently reading, you know, I try to, I, I'm always a couple weeks behind until I catch up, but I'm really loving how they don't get mired down in A, the classic hero story you know what i mean it's not about being someone else it's about his progression up as a hero how he's becoming a hero in exactly. his own right even yes. though you know it does hit a lot of the major stones but it's such a building up that you just don't get a lot of the time in anime they, they do time skips they do long drawn out repetitive battles with no actual training and character progression yeah. <laughs> Dragon yeah, Ball Z. i love dragon Definitely ball Z, but there, mind, well there's others besides that like uh, it's, uh, it's uh, funny that you mentioned that, you mentioned that because we were, we were just, just watching uh, some, some of the newest latest, latest anime episodes, episodes for my hero academia and, and they're, they're currently in that uh, part where i like to call it the tuning exam the tournament yeah the tournament and uh one of my favorite moments was, was with hot, hot and cold. cold. Yes. Uh, the whole part was so good, though. And when when, when he fought against Midoriya, Midoriya or Deku, uh, I, just I just loved that they were able to go into a separate character's backstory and relate it entirely with the main character because everything that was going on with hit with hot and cold with uh, Todoroki's storyline became a moment where Midoriya could be like, well, do I? kick his ass, and then become the ultimate hero, or 
do I recognize that a friend legitimately needs advice and help and work him through it so that he's even better than me, giving me a bigger obstacle to overcome? Right. And it's I, such a, it was such a selfless moment. It was so cool. It, it was a really, it was a very good development. Right. So, such a good. Anime. I just love it so much. The anime is so good. The manga is so good. Like anyone who hasn't checked out My Hero Academia must absolutely must. Guys, you need to go watch that show. You need to read the manga if you haven't yet. Do it. Really? I'm moderating. And yeah, that ah oh man, I've really been happy with that show and 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 what's there's the other ones that are coming out currently, but that one has got to be probably top of my list. Just oh, yeah. I tell everyone watch go my watch hero it. Academia. It's an absolute much watch. Yeah, yeah, and it and even and the people who come to me like. I don't know what to do. I'm caught up. I'm like, go go read the manga where you can get it. There's some places you can still buy it. You know what I mean? You can run out of that. Read fan fiction. <laughs> fan fiction. Fan fiction. Oh, it's a big read. Oh, it's place. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely I'm considering it the current gold standard for yeah. writing. Oh, yeah, most certainly. Absolutely. Yeah, and there's, I'm trying to think. There's very. You know, there's classic anime that can compare, you know, uh, Cowboy Bebop's always had great, obviously oh, yeah. not a series, yeah. but oh, just as a piece yeah. of media, mm -hmm. pretty powerful. Death Note, Trigun. Uh, oh, Trigun. 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 God, so Trigun good. has such yeah. a good job at that. They have so much uh, development. Yeah, there's just a, so many good, well-written shows out there. There, there really is. are. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, Sean and I have been doing this fun little thing where... Uh, I show her an anime that is less than 30 episodes, and then she shows me an anime that is less than 30 awesome. episodes. <laughs> Just get all those really classic 90s short run, short lived that every, nobody knows about, but yet the yeah. fans who know about them can't speak highly enough about them. Like, I, I ran into a gaggle of people at a convention, like, I don't know what Trigon is. What? It's like a learn yourself. Oh, oh, yeah. Wow. Trust me, there. Well, like I said, I, at one point at the convention, there a dude came up to the table and like, oh, yeah, he didn't know Stan Lee. Yeah, he didn't know Stan Lee. He's like Stan or whatever his name is. Like Stan Lee. He's like, Stan yeah, Stan Lee's <laughs> like that. I mean, and usually I don't care, but that one's just the most recognizable mainstream <laughs> one. So I usually just expect people to kind of glob onto that one comic right. name. You know what I mean, I don't expect you to know Ditko. I don't expect you to know Kirby. But I expect you to know Leah, the very tiny least. Yeah. At least know one of those three. Piggybacking off of kind of the anime sorry. discussion. Uh, yeah, sorry to kind of switch you out. No, you're good. You're good. Away with that, so. with that one. I'm curious. Uh, what is your favorite kind of obscure anime? Like an mm. anime that not many people have seen. Um, kind of just like one of those maybe like 20 episode shots. Real short. But oh, I've got one, but you can go first. I have a good one too for that. Oh, it's such a short running anime. It's like six episodes. Fully cool. Oh, yeah. oh, so yeah. you know, oh my goodness. I, and here's the thing I have a love hate relationship with. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. That's awesome. Oh man, that's a good one too, though. Yes. Mine's would have to be one my uh, friend showed me, which is My Girlfriend is a Mermaid, I believe. Or my yeah. boyfriend's girlfriend is. Or it's like it's a, it's a crazy title. It's a really or something. it's a really shoujo funny one though, and I love it because it's just so awkward. It's like, not only are they mermaids, but they're yakuza. What? So yeah, it's that super great. Awesome. It's awesome. It's just like you're now married to our daughter, and you have to you know defend the family honor. <laughs> <laughs> And I think I'm mine is Psychopath season one, oh, actually. Very good. Um, yeah. Very good detective anime where one detective brings together like eight inmates on death row. Um, they become agents for the government. And they all just do all these missions. But it, of course, covers up the underlying story of the villain who's actually controlling this government organization. Really good anime. That and Dead Man Wonderland. Oh, really Dead Man. Wow, I just it need... is incredible that show. I am so. I was just so. De I couldn't get into Dead Man Wonderland because I read the manga. Yeah. It is so much Ooh. raunchier and like as gory and raunchy as Dead Man Wonderland is as an anime. They cut so much out. Yeah, they changed the a little bit of the ending deep. too. They changed a little bit of the ending. Well, I that actually might have made it better actually because the ending of Dead Man Wonderland sucks. It's like it's good. Writing wise, but feels personal wise. You know what I mean. You're left with like yeah. that sour taste in your mouth. That mm -hmm. even though the writing is really together and it's good and it's really how it should end, 
you're just like, I hate you guys for ending it this way. Oh, and I, it's it's so sour in your mouth. You're just like... But uh, uh, if, if I were to pick, pick an obscure anime, anime that is my absolute favorite, favorite. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it's Trigun. And, I, and, I, and the, the unfortunate part is that that's considered obscure. Yeah, yeah. Why, why has, has nobody... In my opinion, that, that was not an obscure anime. No, no, no. I, you know, I don't know why I have to say it like that. I would walk to the library just to get manga volumes of that. Seriously. Of Trigun. I think that was the... Nobody knows about it anymore. It's crazy. It's stupid crazy. I blame the parents. I blame the parents not passing down. Come on. Pa- actually, and I don't know if they ever made an anime. I really, I can't think of it. But try it. Un- no, 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 not oh, that. Yeah, this like, other definitely. one, but for unknown anime? manga that everyone should read. My, I usually I would do a new one, but my classic one is uh, Jin or Jin King of the Bandits. That's oh my god, they made an anime, good, dude. Did they make? Yeah, it? there's I like a they did that one up is, order, but that is such. Was a good it a anime. good anime though? Mm-mm. No, uh, see, that's I why say, I think it was. I will say they like had like a special that but was really it, good, but that yeah, but it it's such not a good as as like a dynamic manga. and like an intro. It was like my very first intro into the whole world of anime and manga, and you know what? Nice. Actually, that was your first one. I didn't think yeah, that was my first one, but I I always don't think hard enough. But my favorite, I forget they make them into animes. Like I read them as manga and then don't then know they have an anime. anime. Uh-huh. Uh Genshiken, that is. Probably by far my favorite is obscure one. If you haven't checked it out, it's Genshiku Club for Otakus, and it's basically a manga all about being an otaku. I got and two more good ones: Witch Hunter Robin and uh, Wolf's Rain. Those yeah. are two Wolf's really Wolf's good Rain, I love. Dope. And I'm, I'm gonna give a shout out for two. Uh, we need more High School of the Dead. Yeah. Yes, yes, please. Time. Wait, didn't time, yeah. and, we, and we need more space dandy. Oh, we do. Oh, oh man, space wow. dandy. I haven't. Oh, Holy crap! God. I haven't talked about space dandy in a while. I know oh, that's. It was so, it was so it was good. good. It was. It was. It's one of those things. Here's the thing. We and it's it's the sad truth about great cult classics is they die ahead of their time. Like Firefly is a good example of that. And not everyone likes Firefly, but there's such a good first season that could have led to some better stuff and all they got was a movie. Ah, and they just chopped it off with like that, huh? They just, just chopped it film. off as a movie and it did. It just... some things that happen. Some of them don't, don't get a movie. Right. Thank God. Yeah, I thought yeah. Fully Cooley was just going to be like... I you know, I know. I, well, that's what I'm loving is all these old 20-year-old... Not, not 20, they're 10, 15 now, but, you know, Samurai Jack had Fully its Cooley resurgence recently. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder how that Samurai Jack <laughs> coming back was amazing. I mean, let's see, it's uh, 2000. Geez. 2000, so yeah, it's 17, 17 years. 17 geez. years. That's, is that just the anime? Or? I don't know. Yeah, that's just the anime run. Let's see what the manga was. So oh, the manga was probably about yeah. four, four years, years older. older. Yeah. Oh, it's at the same time. So, yeah, oh, wow. In 2000. That's wow, still, that's, but that's why I'm like, all these resurgence of these old, you know, kind of cult classic things that are, even even in the movies, I, I'm trying to think. But I mean, just like, dude, it's just been, been really like TBT, like, all over the place. I think yeah, it's just been very trendy sure. to bring back the 90s stuff. Is that what this episode is today? It feels like it's <laughs> right, in the 90s. Like, I mean, we had Power Rangers. Like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Dude, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is, though. It's Everything has been a 90s throwback recently, with very few exceptions. And I mean, King Kong came back. I mean, that's reaching even further back. Well, yeah, movies, I mean, there's, that's... well, there's other ones too, but they're... Samuel, Samuel Jackson, Jackson was in that movie. Oh, so my like, God. And I recently saw a video <laughs> that was so funny, and Samuel Jackson said in it, if my movie, if my picture, if my picture's on the poster, you probably shouldn't show your kids the movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. He's probably gonna say motherfucker I, more than once. Oh, <laughs> have, have you guys seen that reel of Samuel uh, L. Jackson just saying motherfucker all his sayings yes. of all his, <laughs> his contract I really yeah. do I, it probably I think it is actually in his contract where he gets to say it at least su- a certain number of times or whenever he feels I don't know he's got a leeway it's like <laughs> it's called the motherfucker clause no, but <laughs> Anyone else says it, they get punched in the eye. He yeah. says it, he gets a hug. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we love you, but no, that I like. It's it's just great. He does good at it, though. If anyone can say that word, he can. When you say any word that smooth, it doesn't matter what. <laughs> right. You know what I'm looking forward to though? In 20 years, when he's like Betty White and still oh. saying it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just imagine Ed, Kate. Just imagine the old man he played in uh, God, what was Django. Django. Yeah, yeah. Just like imagine that. him just <laughs> all the time. That was great. That was, oh, great. That was an interesting movie. That, that one. Like, I liked. Is that like I liked a mirror into Ghosts of Future Actor? Yes. Oh man. 
Did you guys hear that uh, Quentin Tarantino is now working on a new film um, about the murders? The one dude who was Helter Skelter? Oh, Why am I just blanking? Uh, Marilyn right Manson? Ma yeah, Manson murders. Manson murders. Yeah, yeah apparently. I'm Which, gonna, technically, he never murdered that. anyone. Technic, you know, it's one of those I mean, loosely we'll defined. Where they go where the, with the movie, you he's know. in jail for it, so yeah. must have done. Something. <laughs> he did something I can't, wrong. I can't say that. There's a lot of people. <laughs> Anyone can do it. It's Quentin. Uh, he yeah. terrifies. Yeah, he's, he does a good job. I I personally really enjoy his work. You know, it's very unique. Yeah, it's very it's obscure, and you can tell his, it's you know Tarantino I mean. yeah, too. He has a style. He has a stamp. He and has he does a style. like he, I like that even though he does sometimes, you know, shoot back to his kind of cult classic thing, he does he's not afraid to try something a little different in the new movie or no, here or there. Not at all. Although I've gotta say, I was digging I saw some new Grindhouse stuff the other day Ooh. that I really enjoyed. It was just some random car movie where Did you see Blood, blood drive? drive? I think that was it. It's blood where she drive? It's oh, like, yeah. the one right where she feeds the car with the blood with the body of the Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was it was a grand film. Okay, it yeah, was a grand. Uh, franchise. franchise. Sex, sex, drugs, rock and roll. Wow. <laughs> Sex, drugs, rock and roll, and bloody, bloody murder. Oh, jeez. No, but that's... It's such great, you know, media that's coming out. And I, I like that the flow of media is so much so. There is there is a lot of bad media out, but because there's so much coming out nowadays with there's individual producers like you in. guys and us, that there's something for everybody out there now. There's, there, you, there's no lack of content out there for you to enjoy it, and, and, I and think even to create. It's also people. the availability and the push for it, right? I mean, we have a lot more communities that are suscept that that want those things. We want the independent okay. works. We we look forward to the independent works because some of the major ones are just garbage now. Well, and not just that, but the independent works by being, you know, it's getting so good and so much better for you know to do high quality work at home and so easy that they're driving up competition for the big people. And you know, like right. I like I would say, you know. Sure. Uh, one of the biggest ones I think that are taking a hit are clothing designers. With people like you out yeah. there making such amazing art personally that you don't any you don't longer have, have to right. like pimp out on a shirt and can just yeah. profit yourself. That's the funny, best. Funny she's, enough, she's gonna be doing a T-shirt line. We got oh, hands on a yeah, machine. Yeah. It's like, oh. Awesome. That's so awesome. And that's like places that's like Hot Topic or just losing and and honestly, to your art is stuff. like made for it. It's so clean. So collected, so animated that it just pops well in a shirt. Like I, I like I said, I don't know uh, the the. Damn it! I always forget the piece. It has a very specific name. I just know the one I with toothless her. Pikachu and Stitch mm. is super the awesome. Year like, Brigade. Year Brigade. Yes, That's I the one. love that. That one. Oh is, my goodness! That one is like shirt I want, fodder. I you could put that on that anything shirt. and people would buy it. You know, <laughs> yes. what I mean? like a mug, a cup, a pillow, a hat, a, hat. Anything, a cell phone just case, make my like whole, whole shop. That just uh, be honestly, you could probably get away with a whole website just dedicated. Right. To that. <laughs> it's just like start. It's like all right, it, auto to order cups. Like yep, here they are. Boom. Shoot right to the door. Because I I remember. Uh, like I, I'm pretty sure I'm I'm gonna have to get another print of that from you eventually, so I can gift my father something cool. like that. He very much loved that print Aww. and the thing. He was super Aww. happy. So thank you so, so much for that. making that. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, funny, funny enough though, because of the T-shirt thing, thing, we we uh, showed, showed you a couple of the uh, Undertale stickers, stickers, and we, we told you about the blacklight black posters. posters but like, uh, now about the T-shirt. Uh, she's going to be doing a really cool large poster. In fact, we're actually going to be getting into larger sized posters now. Sweet. But uh, this one is specifically going to be a specialty run for t-shirts where if you like Steven Universe, this is going to be a future look at a famous rock and roll group called Mr. Universe and the Crystal Gems. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's so cool. That's such a cool parody line. That's awesome. Oh, that's He's going to take on his father's already. mantle as Mr. Universe, and he's going to lead him as a band, and it's going to be this really awesome, like, you go to a rock and roll show, and you get those T-shirts and say, I was there. It's going to feel like that. And even on the back, there's going to be tour dates. I was going to say, that's That'd such a cool awesome. idea. That's so awesome. That, that like I said, one-of-a-kind idea, one-of-a-kind mm -hmm. product definitely, you know, would be on the list, even if not for me. For someone I and know, Steven who would Universe. Love it as a gift, oh my you know, goodness! Yes, that's a band exactly like style. Like, oh, I'm fanboying hard and, right now. Oh, they have such a good look <laughs> for it too already. Yeah, oh my yeah. god! 
and uh, she will be uh, still selling the large fusions poster and uh, making uh, another poster, which will of course be the uh, Steven Universe and the Crystal Gems. Uh, Bobby Davis uh, bookmarks of, of Steven Universe and the Crystal Gems, as well as a sticker run of them and a few what we'd like to call office sizes, which are the small ones like the uh, oh, yeah, French the guns. Ones. Yeah, yeah, all right. Uh, those are going to be a bunch of uh, one-offs of some of the gems, which is going to be really cool. And these are just Indeed. a couple of the franchises we're delving into. I don't want to reveal everything that we're delving that's into. That's totally absolutely. Why, thank you for the sneak peek. Yeah, yeah, hey, we appreciate the, the updated no, I mean, info. Like I said, like we can we can plan our budgets according to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trust we me, we'll be wearing some of the shirts. <laughs> that's awesome. And well, actually, while we're mentioning what it, uh, what we have, actually, I think we have a governor's card right now and not uh, Shanna's, but uh, if you wanted to just give the, anybody who's you know listening or watching this video later, either way, hey, there it is. There it is. SEM Designs. Nice. Yes, there we go. Shanna um, Mora. Find me on Facebook. You can find me on my Facebook page itself. Yeah. Um, you can find my website. You can find my Tumblr, my Twitter, and I'll be updating cards to have all my information on it. Sounds good. We're also actually going to tag you in the comments below. Uh, that way, if anyone's going through the comments, they can uh, hopefully get there and get to you as fast as possible. You know what I mean? And get all their great, you know, geekdom merchandise and oh, okay. in a very convenient place. You know, we we love. That's the other thing. The such media that now, you know, you're you're definitely, you know, working for the a demographic that doesn't always get a lot of love from the major labels. You know what I mean? Especially older people like us. Like they make kids stuff. Of cartoons yeah. and anime, but we can't get it in a right? I want a 3X stuff. shirt for my brother. I have to go and custom order it. Oh, and I'm tired man. of custom ordering Doesn't it feel Dragon Ball right. Z shirts every It's year. like you want to feel exclusive. Like, that's the best thing about it. Well, those designs yeah. are beautiful. Oh, and they're so well original. Drawn, and they're original. And, and that's what I want, you oh, know? Yeah, and the, and the individual yeah. factor That's what we're aiming too. for. We're aiming for high-quality content for you guys. Yeah, for and, anyway. we're, and we're looking into a store online, so there will be a web store option, but prices will be better in person if you come find yes. us at Con. Which, you guys have a bunch of stuff coming up, right? Uh, yes. I, I know at least Shanna has a lot of art shows and events that I had heard she was doing, so... you know, if my, you guys... whole, my whole August is filled up. I'll be doing um, Rocky Mountain Con, I'll be doing Fort Collins Comic Con. I'll be doing uh, Beastable, I think it's six currently. Um, there's a couple other things here and there, but um, I'll be updating my calendar for people to know where I'll be, nice. and I'll be awesome. doing advertisements as well for you guys to know where I'll be. That's awesome. Great, great. Please yeah. send us that stuff so we yeah, can also so we can push forward it out. and push it on our show or on Definitely. our page in our show in our group. You know, we love we we love all your work and we love to connect you and the people who want to buy your work obviously there's tons mm -hmm. of them us included yeah like i said i've already purchased a couple and and happy to say like i said next time i see you and even you know whenever some of those new lines come out if i catch okay. a couple i really like i'm gonna get them <laughs> right I, i'm ready for some shirts <laughs> oh yeah i need some new I i've been so rocking ready. the same like 10 marvel shirts for like a little too long now since I went to New York and gave some away. <laughs> and I need some new stuff. Time to change it up, huh? <laughs> it's, time to, it's time to get some more variety in there. It's like, I, I need to get some... I mad need to get some DC shirts. I, I really gotta find some, like, good individual unique DC shirts, you know what I mean? Not just a random Batman symbol or something a different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, those do get old after a while. Well. They're, they're all just right. The it's logos, okay day to day or... thing, but like, you know, like I said, we're, we're entertainment. We need to dazzle. We try to come prepared a little bit like i said i was so mad i forgot my hat because i grabbed Aww. all my equipment so you were gonna get the hat I was yeah i know i'm hat. sporting a game of thrones tonight so yeah, a little nice. different yeah. which is funny that you mentioned game of thrones because in honor of the new season that just came out uh on our youtube channel we've been doing let's plays of the telltale series for oh wow. wow how is that how is it telltale so it really yeah. is a lot of fun it, oh, you're really familiar with the show amazing. one of my favorite things about the game is that they kept the cast the voice acting for the characters in the game are the same actors that is, in that is so and those great studios won't shell out yeah for that. that's no. awesome and, most and, studios aren't willing to pay for it because it does cost mm -hmm. yeah nothing made me happier when i saw that's, in the game credits it's, it's such a <laughs> that is so cool too because it's such a small thing that's a big thing you know audio and and sound in it, you know anything honestly any form even, of video audio media sound really plays a bigger role than we 
and often even bringing it into that, you know, you get attached to these got characters. Got to I got to do Joker and Batman, Batman for so long. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, exactly. We get tied and attached to these characters, you know. We want those voices back because that's yeah. what we associate. Well, like I said, with. even to this day, well, it's funny. Uh, Injustice 2, which I know Governor also plays a bunch of, I was fucking. I don't like the design game. of the Joker, the actual physical uh, character. Honestly, yeah. his, his voice, voice bothers me. Yeah, yeah, and I think my reason is because he's trying to imitate Hamill. He's I feel really heavily, but not quite hitting the spot. No, and I so, think it, it, it always reminded me a little bit more of, uh, I always thought this was an annoying voice with the Joker, but did you ever see The Batman? Yes. Uh, and it was, and it was, he had the dreadlocks, but that voice. That guy, yes, the yeah. laughing red, which honestly his, his voice was cool, but not for the Joker. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like I like the guys. Yeah, right, exactly. I can agree with and that. And I just didn't like the whole character design in that one. Oh, yeah. They changed him up way too much in that one. Like they made him such a animal kind of. I don't they even know. Like I really didn't like the depiction of like him. Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. It was it was definitely not my. Oh, and obviously, man. you know, it's, I'm jaded on that. Especially speaking of which, if you, I, I know you both uh, read comics, play games. Uh, have you been keeping up with any of the new DC Batman stuff? Uh, the War of Jokes I and Jokes? I have Jokes. not. No. It's, I, I, We've I, been so, so busy with conventions. Oh, I know how it is. I, I only do it because I'm supposed to be doing video. Oh, <laughs> oh, so... I have all trade paper books, and yeah. I'm about six months behind. Oh, man. Yeah, it's it's tough, man. It is. I, I only... F I, I have to force time in to like read them right. so I can Got keep it. up with... For these... T basically just for this show. So in case someone asks me... Also for content, we make the memes on the page. I, I'm, I'm sure you've seen them where we try to do quotes and mm -hmm. uh, so we're trying to keep panels. up with those. Is, yeah. Especially recently, there's just been so much great quotes and. Oh man, that Vader comic! Oh. Every page has a quotable Vader. Book. Basically, every e page. basically every volume is full of amazing quotes, and I just can never understand why. Like how I don't know. Who, I gotta figure out who's writing for that. I'm not paying enough attention. But whoever's writing for that is the dialogue. Vader twenty seventeen is just it, it's fantastic. so even the new, even the new one that they just started the yeah new, that's what I'm talking about oh, twenty seventeen dude even the one they did for twenty what was it fifteen or sixteen to that 16 one was, was full of amazing lines well. it's, like I have never been happier than I have been recently with dialogue it's just I think Marvel took it and ran with it and they got some really that's good cool. writers and really good yeah. artists to do these Star it's, Wars it's also, also I think Vader's just, just cool in general yeah I mean, yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy to work with them, but they, I, I'm gonna say they do a good job even on the mall stuff but, but if, if you, you look, look at Rogue One, one I, mean, I mean, you look back at any movie, movie and you're always cherry-picking these moments, moments where you're like, oh, I love that, oh, I love that, oh, I love that. that. In Rogue oh, One, my favorite Darth Vader's, Vader's in it for like five my minutes, my and he's half the movie. Yeah. 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 It's when he's like, don't <laughs> choke on your aspirations, because instantly my, my brain went gangsta with like, the little... The He's just like... I... And I think, you know what, it actually might be that makes the difference is he has such little dialogue a lot of the time that when he does speak, it's with very much power and mm -hmm. char charisma. And, and like you said, he is a powerful character. Same with Batman. A lot of the... But it's even every character in the... Like, the recent Batman run, when you get a chance, I suggest from the recent Rebirth DC, oh, Batman man. and Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps oh, are probably... Hal Jordan and the Green Scott Lantern Schneider Corps still writing? fantastic. Yes, mm -hmm. but it is... Really? It is good. so good, though. It is so, so good. good. The best I love that Scott Snyder's been doing. He, the reason why I, he's my favorite Batman writer is because I have never seen the inner monologue so perfectly. Yes. yes. Oh yes. man, that's and the this, best story. Yeah, and he's in still Batman's mind. Oh, it, it it is perfect. Like that. The series currently both Detective and. Batman, I think, and All Star. No, he's not on All Star. I don't think he might I need be. To, but, I need to be reading. But you got to check it. But both of those, he, I think he's working as writing both of those. Amazing quotes, not just from Batman, but it, like you said, that the amazing quotes from Batman are about his inner monologue. You know, I think one of the lines is, you know, he's talking with someone and he's, he, he's like, you know, I'm not happy, and they're like, I know, but what you don't know is I try to be happy. I do this so that I can be happy, and I. Fail. My, My favorite, favorite moment with Scott, Scott Snyder, Snyder, as far as the inner monologue for him, uh, was during Death, Death of the Family. Oh. And there was this moment where Batman was walking up the steps of the courthouse, 
and he was talking to himself and you were in his mind and you for the first time as the reader truly got an understanding of how terrifying the joker was because we've always thought okay batman's going to beat up the joker but when you read this one moment just these steps the tension that was building as he was walking through the into the courthouse he was actually saying that when i look into the joker's eyes i see him staring back at me not, not with, with hatred, hatred, but with, with love, and it terrifies me. And the fact that I can't predict what he's about to do, he terrifies me. And there was just this level of shaken to the core that Bruce, that Batman had, that I had never sensed before until this moment, that I, I never truly grasped just how fearful he was of the Joker. He was always his greatest enemy, but I had no idea that he was the thing that went bump in the night for Bat. Yeah, yeah. and, and it, like I said, it's very... <laughs> Scott does a very good job of taking those, pe you know, that stalwart character of Batman and breaking him down into the reasonings and the, and the very and very good reason. You know, he's never, I never feel like they're pulling something out of left field when he writes it. You know, when they say something that's like, I'm scared or this happened once, and it's like, no, it's all very cohesive yeah, and it fits. Yeah, it's like it makes it sense. You know, shooter, retrospectively, they're like, I never expected that of Batman, but it. I feel it, you know what I mean? I feel that that yeah. is yeah. how he would be and how he should be and how the character really is, even if I never pictured him in that light. And I feel like he does that for a really good for Batman specifically, but even the other characters, the writing on... There's a, there's an arc in there called I Am Bane, and mm -hmm. or it's it might just be Bane Wars or something like that, but it's... Uh, it's just got such powerful motives, actions, and dialogue of, with Bane... The ending was, you know, I won't ruin it, but it's it's one of those arcs that's just so powerful. And it, like I said, that whole run, gold, instant classic. I loved every, every, pretty much every, I can't think of too many. There was some of the detective ones I wasn't very happy with because, spoiler, there's some stuff with spoiler. But mm -hmm. I'd be able to get through these if you sent me them. I, what do you <laughs> mean? Nice but I keep telling you all these. My Never problem is I. Me, my problem Never. is I love them all. I love every comic. Even you know, obviously some more than others. But I love them all. So I, when I tell people, I'm like, oh, this comic you and this comic and this up, comic man. and this comic. Yeah, you gotta I'll, link me up. Yeah. I'll get you the links to the right links. on. Even even like I said, if you avoid the actual main secret Empire story. Marvel is still pretty good. I'm staying away I'm from Marvel right now. Marvel I'm just movie. very unhappy with their movies, sorry, with their characters. I... Sorry. Well, they, they just, just announced, though, that they're, they're going to be rebooting everything. everything. Yeah, they're doing they're legacy. Bring and all the characters back, back to their original yeah. core. Hopefully they're going to redact yeah. some stuff, too. And, and that's when I'm going to come back. Once they start getting that in a good the circulation, is, I'll and here's finally the thing is, back. Everyone's blaming okay, a lot so of So you are addicted, addicted, but you're a purist. <laughs> definitely. It's, it's, I, I, I'm definitely not into the whole Secret Empire, Cap is Hydra. I'm just not into all that. There's yeah. a lot of that's going on. There's a lot of people... Yeah, you're you're not alone, Leo. But my the worst thing about, about it is that the cover art is so sweet. Yeah, yeah, that's the worst thing about it is all the all the art oh, for every issue, even the side issues, fantastic. fantastic. I'm, I'm not seeing anywhere where I'm like any cringeworthy moments or like you know sometimes you'll get them in a, a side panel. Someone didn't take enough time to do this or that, but mm. these ones like every cover and then the variants and the, I think the other reason is there's a ton of tie-in stuff with. Like Vanity Secret Empire. Empire. Don't, Don't read, read it, it, but look at it. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, I'll flip through the pages. Here's just... the thing, and as I go, Secret Empire gets slightly better the more you read. You know what I mean? It's, See, it's, I know, and then you tell me the some of the dialogue. Like I said, like, if you can avoid nope. Hydra Cap, it's a good story. Mm, it, it, nope. Like I said, theoretically, if you remove Cap from that <laughs> story, it would be amazing. Cap, the, the same uh, character. See, it is so good, though. The <laughs> oh, art is amazing. Man. Right? Yes, it is. Right? 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 Isn't it great? Right? The artwork? Beautiful. Like, like, the we got, we got this box. Right? box. Even Cap looks really cool. Oh, yeah. Hydra yeah. Cap looks so I think beautiful. that's what pisses me off the most. Yeah. Is he looks good as Hydra Cap. Even when they have him strutting around as, like, Dictator Cap, and he's all, like... In green and she, he looked like green's not necessarily an easy color to make look good yeah, and like shoot. regal and if it looks as good as that box did oh it's so Fantastic. good they did such a good job and like i said oh, even no, fattening cake. cake it's bad for me but it's so yeah, yeah. <laughs> but on the side note there there are marvel titles that i would tell you, you can't miss obviously and you read some of them ultimates too Fantastic! So good Ooh, mind blown every oh other every other issue i'm just like see that's what? one i'm 
definitely key. What I'm excited for, for is uh, they, they just, just announced about uh, three, weeks three weeks ago, or maybe a month, month ago, uh, that, that they're, they're bringing, bringing back. back Deadpool, Deadpool kills, kills the Marvel, Marvel Universe. I you know? started that, actually. They just started releasing it. I just read the first one. Cool. It's gonna be, in my opinion, better than the first one. I liked the first one, except for then, after that, every Deadpool fanboy ever was using it as canon. Which, I love it Deadpool, but he's... Was. It, it was, like, it's, it's a side universe canon, but it wasn't the... Main Marvel dead. Yeah, it's theoretical, theoretical canon. Theoretical canon. Six, six, you know, eight. you know, it's six one <laughs> six. But it's also one of those loosely played ones where it's like, no reason for him to really start. You know, it's he goes insane from the fourth wall and starts killing people. The new Deadpool has motives. Good. It makes Sorry. it so much better. It gives him an element of surprise that he, he didn't necessarily have all the time and. That was my big thing in Deadpool vs. Marvel Universe. A lot of the things and the people who would have been smart enough to take care of him. Theoretically, let's say the yeah, Invisible Woman. It. That one was an alright one, too, because I think that there's there was all kinds of ones. that They I had like a the lot Luke of Cage clever... Death either. They, I will say, yeah. a lot of... The Luke Cage death was intelligent. It was, but, then, but I was just like, really? I, I just don't feel like it would they be do that a, simple and easy. They did something similar, though, that, and that's smarted. the thing. You have to stretch for, for Deadpool versus the Marvel Universe, you have to stretch your believability measures to yeah. be like, all right, you just got to let it go, because they also have a scene in one of the yeah. new ones where I'm like, <laughs> theoretically, it does work, but also theoretically, it's like, that would never that happen would because of this mm -hmm. one tiny fact of like, no one's going to do this. But I think that's kind of what you like about it. You like it's, the fact it's that it's theoretical. It's it's it is, it is. And that's, like I said, it's it's a very much like an homage to all the things that could be possible. Exactly. And that's what I like. Just this. I mean, Deadpool versus Cell, Team 4 Star yeah. Shout Out. Yeah. Oh yeah, that <laughs> one was nice. such a great one. And <laughs> honestly, Deadpool, Deadpool versus Cell. That was a really good one. I liked that. <laughs> They're, I really like that that they've upped their game in the 3D animation kind of uh, mm -hmm. scope. You know what I mean? That was really cool. Especially after they did their whole move to an office thing or uh, whatever they did a couple years hey, ago. Really? Oh, they've they upgraded. They got on their Patreon yeah, game and like went. Crazy. Yeah, they Stepped went. Up. They went. In. But to be fair, I mean they're a multi. Well, please support the official release. Oh, always support the official release and catch new episodes of Dragon Ball Super every on your local <laughs> Japanese network. <laughs> no, but I feel like that's the thing, though. If you're going to mention Team Four Star, you got to give that little, little yeah. asterisk. I, I think that's the any abridged series. Like, even when I got to get mine, I got to go look up the licensing right for my abridged series so I can make that shout out really good. And that's like, all right, I'm not going to. I mentioned everyone, right? They're not going to sue me for not telling them. Right. They're probably like still willing to drop it anyway, in. Oh, no, you're going to. Gonna sue an artist for doing something for free. I know it's like I made so much money. Oh wait, I didn't make any money at all doing this. I did this out of my pure love and passion for the content. Yes. Wow. How dare you? How? Who? What kind of person are you? Off the jail with. Off the jail with us. Too much of a fan, good sir. Sir, you are a maverick and you are not adapting to our society. You're gonna have to go. But no, I, I I very much like that. Just surprised they, there's, there's even an issue. issue. Kira Toriyama probably does, probably, probably thinks. Uh, team oh, I'm Warcraft sure they love it. Uh, I love that they. Have you seen the video of uh, Takahata 101 talking to? I can't remember nope. who was it. I can already tell you no. No, no yeah. it's basically <laughs> he's at a con and he's not really talking. He's he's in the crowd, but they're asking questions about Dragon Ball Z Kai, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Well, what is it?" It's like, "Oh, it's kind of like a short and funnier, better version." So you're telling me you abridged it? Too bad we did that four years ago. He <laughs> 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 did it in his Napa voice. And it was amazing. If you get a chance, there's a YouTube video of it somewhere. Oh, and I can't man, remember. It's either. Awesome. I can't remember exactly who it is that he was talking to, but it was uh, Chris Sabat, probably. I think. Uh, and they, they just they do such good work. I love him. I've loved all the recent episodes. Ah, my favorite recent one is still just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still one of my absolute favorites is <laughs> Velocity times strength equals F Therefore your body Nerd <laughs> I was hitting my head against the wall For five minutes Oh That's what that noise was <laughs> No I saw a bird <laughs> it was pretty. I love it. Uh, great show. show. But um, 
Oh, oh uh, Piccolo's, Piccolo's arm, arm is completely, completely destroyed. destroyed. Do you, you want to see something, something really cool? cool? No, oh, I, I know you're messing with me, but I so do. <laughs> oh, that's hardcore. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> that's hardcore. Okay. I just, North I love City, from the uh, south, cities south cities to the west, west and west, west cities, cities also to the east. Huh. Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, those ones are... They, they do such a good job. Even even prior to Fantastic the actual Team 4-star formation, the they have the couple movies they did beforehand with just uh, yeah. Masako and Lana Pator and Even those ones are so great. To, uh, I'm here to kick bubblegum and chew ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. <laughs> uh, <sleep. laughs> oh, oh man. man. Vegeta. Vegeta. Is that the Namekian? Is that me? Is that me stronger than me? Oh, kill me! <laughs> that one is like, oh, is that me stronger than me? <laughs> oh. oh yeah, actually, that was the one for, from the recent one. Just, I've done it, Kakarot! After years of training, I've finally become stronger than you! Me! Yay! Hey. Like, God damn it! He's just so angry he's that he's so doesn't care. Off. <laughs> oh. like, I, I love, love these, these new suits. Paragon till death. death. You ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> team, uh, then I'll snap the bald one's neck. Totally gonna yell Team Three Star as I do it too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. I they're love they're it. all pretty. Well, so much. Anything is gold from those guys. Oh, this this is, is, this well, and my cousin fell off person. after season two. Too bad it's overwhelmed by overwhelming <laughs> hatred. <laughs> What's wrong, Vegeta? Nothing. Just having an aneurysm from sheer stupidity. Didn't oh, think you were that, that stupid, stupid, Vegeta. <laughs> 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 It's like, you, you must, must think, think you're, you're cute. cute. Bitch, I'm adorable. <laughs> <laughs> it's Popo! Uh, oh my god, the password is Popo? No, no. the ship just this knows better. <laughs> <laughs> How about oh, when me this, is, this is officially <laughs> become a Dragon Ball. <laughs> right? An abridged <laughs> reference. This is just an abridged recast notes. How, How about when Kami fused with Piccolo, Piccolo in the Cell Saga, saga yeah. and uh, Popo <laughs> picks up the staff and he's like, only one, one thing, thing left to do. to do. Turn down for what? Fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, I love what they call it. It's like, it's, are you questioning God? Are you? Oh, I'm, I'm semi-perfect. Semi How can you be semi-perfect? Semi you're either perfect or you're not me. <laughs> 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 Bitch, I am the hype. So it looks like uh, one of our viewers here, Izzy, commented that apparently Super takes place before the Oob arc in Z? Wait, but the oh, Oob arc is like a one episode yeah. long? Okay. It's really? Wow. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, Super, Super actually, because uh, the, the Oob arc, arc takes place, place there's a the time, time skip after uh, Kid, Kid Buu is defeated, right. and, it, and yeah. Oob arc oh, takes yeah, place yeah, pretty yeah. much as an intro for, for GT, GT, which is not supposed right. to happen That's anymore, because Super is currently rewriting the timeline. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But it, it, Oob does not exist yet. Oh man, that's a lot of craziness, oh, and that's true. That Loving true. Marvel, as he said, I I'm up and down on Marvel, is he? Not that secret I, empire. Like I said, like... almost everything that's not specifically Hydra Cap, and even about a quarter of the stuff that is, pretty good. So it didn't affect the universe in such a big... It, it is such a big effect, but all the other comics are still true to their nature. I'm loving Infamous like Iron Man. Like I said, the Man. biggest problem... Oh. oh my god, Infamous that Iron, Doom Iron Man. Is Iron Man is probably, that one is probably my number one comic right now, from Marvel from right Marvel? now, is Infamous Iron Man. Doctor like Doom as Iron Man is so amazing. So fantastic. Cool. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah check it out. It's... It's, he takes a turn after... They even do a whole spiel about it in the first comic about... Why are you being Iron Man? And he's just like, well, he remembers Secret Wars. Mm -hmm. Just like T'Challa and uh, I forget who else remembers Secret Wars. There's a couple other characters. There's a few of them, I think. 
Yeah. There's there's a couple. Spidey was in it. Spidey. Hulk. Yeah, there's actually a pretty big. Yeah, like, a, they kind of know. a decent little roster. Yeah, well, they know the thing, but like he actually remembers Secret Wars, not just the time oh, prior okay, to so He remembers we're talking being characters God that were actually yeah. remembering. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, his big thing is I think he even references like himself being God Doom. Mm-hmm. So. In the first couple panels, I think. Probably, actually. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, really good stuff, though. Like, did you see that at uh, San Diego Comic Con they showcased Thanos and the Black Council? Yes, they had, yeah. they had all my favorite uh, Corvus Glaive. The only one they were missing was it was it Proxima Midnight. Who was who was missing from the Black Order? Was it Proxima Midnight? Um, uh, you would probably know better than me. I was just really happy to see it. Oh, they're so great. Like I said, that they're only missing one, and that's so amazing. I want that goblet in the living room. Oh, yes, please. Can I just right have the, the thing is, is like, big? oh, yeah, it's gigantic. Exactly. I could wear it like a shirt. <laughs> I put my arms through two fingers. <laughs> just dance around at the goblet. I'm the king of the universe. <laughs> That'll oh, be another cosplay. cosplay. Someone's going to dress up like that at con. They're going to be wearing the gauntlet like a suit. And, and people are going to be like, what are you doing? It's like, this is the actual size. Oh, my God. Let's Izzy, see, we got a couple yeah. of questions from Izzy. If you, well, we'll let's see. Also, what did you think of Secret Empire number six, Axel? Uh, I am not on Secret Empire, and I'm yeah, going to get on it for a minute. Secret Empire six, I literally just read today. Um, I'm trying to remember the events. Actually, I... This is my favorite episode so far. Or it's my favorite chapter so far, because fuck you, Hydra Cat. That's all I gotta it's say just, about it. No spoilers, it's just, it's a, it's a nice, it's it's like a tear down slash win, but it's, it's it's really it's kind of, yeah, it's, away it's, from it's, that Hydra. It's, it's just like, it's one of those blows to like, for good, you're like, yeah. And also, you at heard the it right time. here, episode, episode six. six, fuck you. Yeah, <laughs> fuck you, Hydra Cat, episode <laughs> six. <laughs> That. And then, oh man, that's so funny. <laughs> I'm I'm super excited though for all. Uh, honestly, there's so much stuff. Uh, I don't know if you guys are big followers of the Marvel Netflix universe at all. But oh man, that upcoming Defenders. Everything but, is Iron pretty Fist. Pretty yeah. everything but Iron Fist, huh? Uh, and Iron Fist, I'll say, it it was good, but like. I there wouldn't put problems. it up top with no, Daredevil no, no, no. season two or anything. I said I think, and I'd have to revise this. Probably now my list is D- Daredevil. Luke Cage, then Iron Fist now. Oh, yeah, that's what it has been that, for me. Right? Yeah, I think it was before. Daredevil, Luke Cage. It goes Iron Fist. Daredevil Season 1, Jessica Jones. Ah, see, this is where, see, this is, is, this is where I disagree with Coach, because we just couldn't get we, into we Jessica Jones. We hate Jessica Jones. Jones. I don't hate no. Jessica Jones. I don't hate oh, Jessica no. Jones. I just, oh, I, I only like the last half of it. Okay, I can agree with that. Okay. Okay. I, I, my few problem, episodes are my, my favorite. biggest problems with Jessica Jones, I feel like, is maybe even that they stayed too true to her character. She's so hard. Well, that's the thing is, is that a lot of people have given me the same complaint that they hate Jessica Jones, and I'm like, great acting. It was. It wasn't her fault at all. It's yeah. literally, it's a problem. Just... And I think if they had done a little different, uh, like I said, the the problem, the other problem besides Jessica Jones not being necessarily the relatable kind of, and it depends on who you are, obviously. If you, I find it's very relatable. She's yeah. garbage because of her past, not for no reason. Exactly. I mean, that's yeah, that's just, true. The I problem I'm being was it's, it was hard for me to relate because a lot of what her issues are, some of her alcoholic issues come into bear, which obviously is chem, stem from her child abuse, Did you ever abuse read issues. Alias, though? What's that? Did you ever read Alias? I or did, and like just... I said, it's so accurate to Jessica Jones, which is why I think it's... Because that's the thing, is is that it, it goes into a lot further detail yeah. as for yeah. what the Purple Man right. actually did to her. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's very stupid. reasonable yeah. why she yeah. is the way she is. Oh, yeah, it's it's and it is, but the pro- like I said, I think the hardest part is because you don't get to the deeper stuff. Like I said, once you get to, like, episode four, episode four when you get the real kind of introduction to the purple man and what he's been having her do to be very that's when i started getting hooked in that's when i started that, I was just so I, bored. and i think that's like i said my biggest oh, problem was the actor who purple, purple man is that's the that and i think that's the problem he's is it's, <laughs> it's one of those issues where the the villain, the villain is, is such a likable villain not necessarily like I, I he's likable but character, i enjoy him as character. a villain he was a good villain you know what i mean yeah, yeah. Well, very like good purple amazing whenever very he touches. and i and like i said i think it was just it, her character is a tough character to get in on especially because she's a very crime 
detective, but also superhero. So it's a very line that she balances that you don't really see anywhere else. You know, the super powered yeah. detective. Uh, especially with the like Superman being a being detective. detective. No, it's not true. like she's all powerful. She has issues. Her limit to her power is very within grasp. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. definitely sure, like definitely. Like having, but having said that, like I said, especially, and then the other thing, being Purple Man was a great villain her, for her because of her. You know, she did have powers, didn't matter to him. You know what I mean? That didn't affect his power set. Right. Actually, <laughs> if anything, it made her a rare collectible. Oh, physical. very she much so. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it definitely uh, super, uh, the purple man loves collecting superheroes so when he gets a chance it's always great uh, and like I said that's why Jessica Jones falls for me I think was because it's hard to execute her correctly with like and it's I felt like it would have been it was accurate but it was super know, accurate it just didn't hold me as a viewer like like I said, the just somebody who hasn't stronger. read Jessica Jones comics, I, and I, I think really that's the thing. If you know so Jessica like, Jones better, uh, you'll in, you would enjoy it. Better, I couldn't you know really I mean? enjoy she, it as much because it didn't dive as deep into her story as I wanted it to, and I found it just being the same rotation in the first four episodes. Okay, she does a case. Luke Cage might pop up, possibly. Who is who? I was and I see. I was see. thinking. I thought, so was I thought like, the current actor, actor being Luke Cage. Cage you have to forgive me. I don't remember his name, but he is perfect. He is. So he is. He was at. Oh my Con. god. He with Finn Jones. Actually, first they were both mm-hmm. at Comic Con while we were there, and uh, it, they they are they are so good. And honestly, I would have liked to see Jessica Jones introduced in Luke Cage and then into his own series. But I want to hear but, I want to hear what y'all have to say about Iron Fist though, because that got a lot of backlash. Oh, that was one that was like... See half of the first see, episode. with me, oh, the man. problem with Iron Fist was its writing. Yeah, it's very The writing is poorly... poorly I can agree. Yeah, yeah. Especially, <laughs> I think it suffers it's from s- some similar ones to Jessica in that the very first three episodes probably... Ooh, I'm just screaming even Danny for Iron, somebody. Yeah, even for Iron Fist, it was... It, it's it, a it half season. Yeah, it is. It does. Like, Definitely, I think, I think the other hard part is comparing Jessica Jones or this, <laughs> that, that. Any of them to each other is hard because while they're similar, they, they are vastly different in a lot of ways. Especially well, Jessica Jones and, I would say, uh, Luke Cage. Very different, necessarily, than Daredevil and... Iron Fist, who kind of work in that ninja, who should be kicking ass from the beginning. There's this weird balance. With Jessica Jones, she plays to her demographic. Her demographic is very gritty, very down to earth type of thing. She's very, very dark horse. Oh yeah, I was. With, yeah. With yeah. Iron Fist, though, you have this very peaceful Buddhist guy, but then the one he the comes first off scene, like a douchebag. The first yeah, scene yeah. is um. He's like, hey, I'm here. And the woman calls security security immediately without there being any reason to it. The writing in Iron Fist, it's like... Just because he looks like a homeless guy. But the thing is, though, is that... How could you not know this was going to happen? Yeah. I mean, when Bruce Wayne went away and came back... He at least came back looking like I Bruce think that Wayne. was yeah there was and a this big guy totally looked like a homeless guy off the streets and the only thing he had to go on was I'm Danny and it's like you think that's going to work yeah. he was right. very unbelievably naive even at very that point. naive he, it to was a lot so, of it was very tough like I said and then like I said half the first episode even to the second episode I'm just screaming punch somebody right like I'm literally he got lost when he was three because the guy has no idea how the world works so naive yeah like. He, it, it was, and it, it, the problem was it wasn't the level of rich naive or the level of disconnected naive that it was should have been appropriate. You know what I mean? And I think by the, the time he left, he was had absolutely had foolish naive. naive. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was like, like five. Okay, or, you dis you did go away to you know a very Buddhist setting for a long time, but it doesn't mean you'll be was, that stupid to come back yeah, and just be like, like well, I'm Danny. Hey. Here I am. Like, fist. You're supposed to be wise. Yeah, yeah. you're supposed yeah. to have gained knowledge. And to be fair, he's that newly. Well, and uh, yeah, we can't reveal because a lot of some of it does get revealed better <sighs> later in the story. Yeah. I mean, Much it, like it Jessica unfolds, Jones, but later in the story makes things earlier seem more relatable, more understandable. But it's just it's, like it's said, hard tough to, sw- to go through that before getting to the payout i'll say it's so hard to swallow to keep people hooked it's in. hard to swallow for probably about the first four episodes but them meachums man they really make the series for me they're i think that's even villainous they are very good like i mean villainous. oh man what's the I think, head, honestly the Marvel, father meachum he's just so although it does awesome still suffers that it still suffers from that 
yeah. that same kind of problem Luke Cage had. Oh, that initial Dude. villain that's just like so powerful. You want them to stay, and then we're not going to ruin it. Yeah, yeah, we we won't. We there's won't there's a lot of much. goes on. It's that funny because uh, that was making me think about Luke Cage with the villains and everything. And it's like when I was watching that show, I loved watching Luke Cage. Yeah, but, but every time they cut away to a villain, I lost interest in the show. Yeah, uh, because I could give, I could care less about this nightclub. I could care less about selling guns on the streets. I want to know what that legitimately had to do with Luke Cage. And yeah, they tried to tie it in with family and friends, and it's just like now you're just forcing a story into a situation. It needs to be more organic. But basically, right. yeah. for for us, Iron K, uh, Iron Fist is. Bottom tier, like it's just bottom writing wise. Iron Fist is the worst, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like the effort, the effort in Iron Fist, definitely writing and character, is a lot heavier in the second half, and that was the problem with that series and why it's so low. On my actually, list, just... my my issue with it is that wasn't the reason everyone was giving it flack. If everyone gave it flack for its plot holes and writing issues. I oh, well, give, we I know why they're giving it flack. Everyone was giving it flack spoil. for the the diversity, etc. The thing is, and when it wasn't yeah, at well, all. Iron Fist should be Asian. I'm like, but his original character is Caucasian. Like, it is mm-hmm. not an Asian character. In like Oregon. I said, I could understand that complaint that they had in the with the ancient one in Doctor Strange. Yeah, I could see there's his original he was character classic Asian, Asian male. Right. It was a it was a very now saying that she's a great actor and did a great job portraying great an, actress, you know that kind I of. I agree. A thing. And her script was awesome. Well, that, that actress has actually, actually portrayed, portrayed men in other movies. Wow. So wow. I think what they were going for was they wanted to cast somebody who was genderless. Hmm. That would be an and interesting see, that's a on great. She was a chameleon as far as gender goes. I mean, yes, you could tell she was a woman, but she wasn't really that feminine. They didn't dress her as a child. Yeah. Yeah. And her speech, everything else about her, I mean, she was very masculine as well. Yeah, yeah I don't think I, I don't think they ever actually even uh, even referred to her with any female pronouns, like she or her. Uh, I think uh, maybe doc, her. I think he did actually. He in, might in when he first meets her, but I don't think anybody else does. Yeah, yeah, no one else did. They don't I know. know they it's always the ancient one, the master, master. Never very vulnerable or venerable, very respectful. Which also great movie. They did a, the only thing I didn't like in that was Dormammu. Everything else yeah, I loved in that want, movie. I don't want to have that body. Dormammu. But the thing is, is that he looked very much like classic Dormammu. Yeah. Yeah. The, the old cartoons with Doctor Strange. He, he, he looked, looked very reminiscent, reminiscent of that. And they, because he of that, did, I but I just like... missed the flaming head. Yeah, yeah right. I only like the I body wanted. of Dormammu. Like, and even and if you've seen some of the everything. recent depictions of Dormammu, like within the yes, 2000s. Yes, recent depictions of Dormammu. Yeah, there should be. Like I said, I'm a pretty hardcore fan of Dormammu. Yeah. Nice. And see, that one, there's, there's a drawing of him in, and maybe it's an Ultimate Universe one, but I don't think it is, where he very much looks like the one in the in the film. With the kind of lined face, you know what I mean? And, uh, well, that was him classic in the old yeah. cartoons. Mm-hmm. Like I said, this one is cartoon. an uncanny one. Like I said, I just, the only thing I missed was the Flaming Skull. If they had put the Flaming Skull, I'd have been happy. Well, he's he's not he's not really a Flaming Skull, though. I know. He's a fire demon. It's, I know, but it's the fire is what I, I missed from that, you know what I mean? The, I always well, remember it. have fire. It, it was, was a purplish blue fire. I know that, and that's, like it threw me off. Fire. It, it <laughs> threw me off. It was. It, it. I think what else made it harder is it. They had that kind of deep purple fire in the dark dimension, which was the classic dark dimension. It of did the blend in a little. Yeah. yeah, and that was my biggest thing. It was, and and obviously in a in a dark. I don't even. No, I mean the movie theater wasn't that dark, but. I we also saw it in three D theater, though. but it was definitely the the scene. I get what you're saying, but. I will say the dark dimension is like spot on, as oh, far as yeah. cool. like it, so it's cool. they did a good job. Just of even the that. magic in that movie is cool, and I think that. Well, was I got a lot of complaints. Actually, shout out to Film Theory. Uh, Matt Pat did a video on Doctor Strange's magic, and it's all scientifically explainable. It's, it's all light and crystals, and it's completely realistic within the realm of science. Wow. wow. Well, yeah, and that's, that's what I love about awesome. yeah, and I love about Marvel and DC have done this now for a while. They've been 
more pseudoscience, you know what I mean, in their comics. It's not just because it's like, oh, why is Superman vulnerable? Out of His cells process. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, in the name of the guy, but if you watch, watch that, that video, video by MatPat on Film Theory, theory they, they actually, actually reference that they brought, they brought, they brought, in, a brought in a team of college, college university professors, professors to verify the science behind Doctor Strange. What? Everything in there is completely legit. Even when you see the multiple realities stacking upon themselves, it's technically a kaleidoscope effect brought on by multiple crystal shards. Wow. Light wow. reflects because uh, they, he was showing in the, in the uh, video that light can be either a uh, physical or energy base. It could be either a, a, a photon or a, or a uh, photon, I believe, or a photon wave. And uh, basically, they actually have successfully been able to capture light and turn them, turn light molecules into a physical crystal. Yeah, they can solidify it now. So... And what was really cool was that there was this moment when he grabs the Eye of Agamotto, and the first thing that happens is a crystal pops up showing different shard realities because it's reflecting into those worlds. And whenever you see the kaleidoscopes, it is believed that there is a wall of crystals that is so clear you cannot perceive the lines, but you can perceive little fragmented cracks that create the kaleidoscope effect. That's interesting. Oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome. And I, I really, like I said, I love that they've been tying it in. They've been getting, and I'm glad that they've actually been getting these reference from real scientists because that's where I find a lot of writing to be, it, you, it can cause holes in writing a lot of the times that yeah. you don't know just pops up. And vice versa. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a very fine line that you step between as a writer when you do that, any kind of fact stuff either way. And and it's tell me something impossible. I better be able to believe in it. Like, exactly. Yeah, it's that. It's it's got to. Yeah, and it's such a thin line. It's it's the magic. You know what I mean? It's the magic that keeps you entranced, even though it's all fake. You know, it's all just. Yeah. But it's such a great. It's building a world, and that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I yep. think we're. Uh, uh, I actually did want to ask you guys: Do any of you, do either of you, uh, follow the Arrowverse series? Um, any of the, I like, did, Arrow? but not until two seasons ago. ago. To believe it or not, I actually gave up on the CW about a year and a half ago. It's so hard to stay, but like once you get to these most recent seasons, that's where everything changes for all these shows and gets a lot better. Arrow. Yeah, the thing is, is five, I, mean, I believe that too. But it's when I when really I pick hard. up. If I, if I pick up any comic book, mm -hmm. I can guarantee that a majority of it will be storyline that is important to the character and the threat. Then I watch any of the CW shows, and 90% of it is... <laughs> they, 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 they suffer from... Oh, yeah. They suffer from is the mom issue. dead? No, she's in a coma. Oh. Oh. Yeah, and they'll they always just bring just back. The plot so armor is heavy. Yeah, they 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 suffer from the classic TV problem of you want this show to continue going. You don't have a structured. That's one thing I like about the Netflix. Uh, the model. ten episode. Yeah, ten boom. episodes. They plan out with that season. Genius, Genius. right? And you frame out an entire story. Sit like, and we've discussed it before. Our our number one has always been Daredevil season two, probably that for any show it. ever Ugh. being just very much like a comic book. Every episode ties in with other characters, moves smoothly, mm -hmm. with not too Every much time, distraction. Me and my dad used to watch Arrow together just because it was a fun father-son thing. We love superheroes. And there was this ongoing joke that just before, just uh, when they went to commercial break, we would say, like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. <laughs> it's just like, my God, this is such a freaking soap opera. Yes, I know, and I and and believe it or not, coming into Arrow, um, I came in and there were five seasons already. I skipped a lot of that shit. I was like, "Fuck!" But it. You this see is the second episode. Season, That's important. Because yes. I will say that Manu Bennett, yeah. who played Deathstroke, was, was absolutely, absolutely amazing. Fantastic. That's what I've heard. I've heard that the best part of Arrow is, is Deathstroke. Deathstroke, Deathstroke yeah. is Which, such a good villain. Very, very similar to the Flash. Oh, as man. much as I love the Flash and Barry Allen, uh, Thawne's always the best part of that. Series, he's, a, a he's just such a good mm. villain. It's very hard to. But uh, uh, Manu Bennett, Bennett uh, if, you if you like, like him uh, uh, as Deathstroke, Deathstroke, I highly I recommend you take a look at his career. career. A, lot a lot of people didn't know this, but he was the white orc, orc the leader of the orcs in, in the Hobbit movies, movies. Really? and he oh. also got his start. He got, he got his start, start as as Crixus, uh, who was Spartacus's best friend in the in the in the Showtime, or was it? 
it, I know it was, was uh, what was the stars? The stars. stars yeah, I did see that with Sparta because I did recognize him as Crixus. Wow, that but is awesome. I did not know he was the orc because of all the obviously the makeup they had in that movie. The makeup yeah. was practically CG the whole movie, but oh. it was <laughs> CG. Right. <laughs> they, the thing is, there was a huge combo of, but I know for at least for a lot of the the costuming, not the fighting or anything. Yeah. A lot of that was done with uh, still latex and like oh, I, they yeah. said something like six hundred. Next time I watch the Hobbit movie, listen to his voice. I mean, he may be speaking orc, but it is Manu Benes. That's wow. awesome! That's I can't great. wait to check that out because yeah, he, he was a great Crixus. For sure, I love that yeah. character as well. And yeah, Do you want to hear something funny? I was reading this article about him uh, about a year ago because he was uh, coming to a convention and I wanted him to sign a bunch of stuff. My God, I love him. But what's funny is is that he actually wanted to do softer roles. Like he wanted to be uh, a weaker man. Like he wanted to be a gay guy or he wanted to be a uh, oh, shrimp or he wanted to play someone who was picked on. He wanted to be that kind of image, the nerd. He really wanted that. But then they said no. Spartacus, you're okay. in that. And I his career has never been the same since then. He had to be the uh, macho man. He had to be out there, the warrior, the guy taking blood by the sword. And he didn't want that for his career. But now he's he's typecast as the badass right. warrior. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's... Well, hopefully he can move on. Uh, if you know, if they comes, he can hopefully move on to stuff because he seems like a great actor, especially just based on those two roles. Not even having oh, seen him as Death Strike, I, I, I can't help but love every word he says. It, I'm on the edge of my seat when he's talking. And he comes back in season five, which is why season five was so good. Him oh, and Prometheus, well, and even beyond the actor who's great, the character of Deathstroke is an amazing, amazing character. character. I I had yeah. someone ask a friend of mine, uh, Mikey. Uh, he just got started in the Arrowverse, and so yeah. his and even comics and kind of everything in general. So his lim he has a limited knowledge, and his big question was like, why was Deathstroke, you know, like specifically Slade, the Teen Titans' main enemy in the series? And he was very questioning, like, why wasn't that too intense? You know what I mean for the Teen Titans and. Well well, he, well, he was, was actually originally, originally in the comics, comics introduced as a Teen Titans, Titans threat. threat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's why in the show, show they brought him back because he was their first real yeah. uh, uh, problem. Right, yeah, and that's exactly. what I told him is the reason the he's so powerful issue. is because, yeah, he's the real first deadly threat. The Titans have to kind of deal with themselves. And, you know, he's he's got the abilities. to t You know, he takes on the Justice League from time to time after his appearances, obviously, with the Teen Titans. But he's... Like I said, he is that dark, menacing, powerful enough hero, skilled enough. Sorry, not hero, villain, uh, mm -hmm. who makes. Well, not even, you know, you were kind of right in the first place because he's more like the anti-hero. Yeah. It really depends who's paying. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's, exactly. And like I said, he's just. It's it's an up and down thing for him. So you kind of just gotta whatever his motives are that day. Whoever's paying him, that's. That's how business rolls. Now. Yep. The, the the being the problem being that mercenaries are often in villainous roles because, you know, if you only do stuff for money, that you'll do anything. And, yep, and if people who have morals won't do it, they, they then you got will. To, right. to have Ron Perlman do his voice though. Oh wow. Did you know that? I did Ron not. Ron Perlman? No, no in the original Ron. Teen Titans show, show, it was Ron Perlman yeah. who would of course become Hellboy. Hellboy. Yeah, that's wow. crazy. I did didn't not know that. <laughs> I, you know, list, thinking about it now, I can totally hear it because I've, I've obviously, wa I'm sure we all have Teen watched Titans. tons oh, of the original right. series. I, I watched this, the specifically the Trigon arc, thirty times probably. You know what I mean? That yeah. so the whole, you know, you know your Des his Destiny Raven. I can hear him. He's just very smooth in that. He, he does a very smooth version of his voice. Like that's sweet stuff on molasses. Oh yeah. <laughs> I it, to listen to that, that villain kill, kill my, my friends all day. <laughs> <laughs> I really could though. He does Ron, and I mean, that, I really want more Hellboy for him too. Yeah. I would like to see some more. I wouldn't be I, even if not live action. Hellboy. Just have him voice Hellboy. He does a great job. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He does. I really appreciate Ron Perlman and most of his stuff. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but uh, that's, that's why uh, in Pacific Rim, Rim he, he was uh, the, guy the guy that was picking up all the kaiju parts, parts and selling them on the black, black market because he is uh, Guillermo del Toro's Johnny Depp, Depp. kind of like how Johnny Depp always works for Tim Burton. Burton. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ron Perlman, if it's a uh, Guillermo del Toro's Torres movie, then he's probably in it somewhere. Yeah, yeah that's but, awesome uh, too. That's what I'm really excited, excited about, though, is that we might get Hellboy again. Yeah, he's been. I know that. 
because uh, Guillermo del Torres has been trying to for the last three years, and he actually got a green light. So I'm hoping this goes through, but he's been trying to do a Justice League Dark, which would be all of the spellcasters and witches and wizards, Constantine, Swamp Thing, and all I can think about, what better way to bring back his Ron Perlman than to bring Hellboy into that cast? That would be, honestly, I think that would pull it together, too, because giving that already seen and proven face to the new characters will lend them credibility. Absolutely. It'll, it'll bring with, together uh, the characters. And with Watchmen recently becoming official DC, I can see where other comic book labels lend their characters into the, the bigger well, franchise. DC has been doing a huge job, especially comic-wise. I'm not, you know, other media haven't had, but comic-wise, they have done an enormous brand, uh, job branching out into other mm -hmm. media. Mm -hmm. uh, I know... For certain that there was the Planet of the Apes cross, they had a, a Star uh, Trek crossover. Star Trek mm -hmm. crossover with Green Lantern. They Teenage just, Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles, Ninja, with Batman. Ninja Turtles, Scooby Doo, obviously. Oh, Batman Scooby always have their dope. cross. <laughs> they no, just it's time for a Hellboy cross. No, they Man. just did a Looney Please. Tunes cross, which was amazing. I don't know if you guys checked that. Batman versus or Batman and Elmer Fudd. Holy shit! Oh that I like God. the other ones are sometimes <laughs> goofy. Sometimes that one is like a, the Road Runner story. Lobo one. Oh my God! We just posted a quote on that one today, and in the in the crossover, oh, Lobo's so not able funny. to kill the Road Runner. He just he's, stuffs a grenade. He's in simply his unable to. He's trying to uh, kill the Road oh, Runner. Yeah, he's ready. It, it's such a wily kind of thing. It's like mouth. it's just like meep meep. What? What? <laughs> just fucking. It's grenade. it's such a great. Like I said, the, the Elmer Fudd one. And Batman one are probably the best as far as story wise. The story in that one and the way they interwove the two universes. But every one of them is very feel good, and they're two parters. Every single one of them has a main Whoa. Justice League part and then a tiny a Looney side. Tunes comic part mm -hmm. at the end, which is so awesome. It's That's cool. Cool. I have to pick those up. Oh, Def, yeah. I, I'm Check gonna buy out. some of those. Looney Tunes like, ones. Yeah. Uh, they've got six. I believe it's uh, Marvin the Martian and Martian Manhunter. Haven't checked that one out. It's pretty that funny. That sounds awesome. Pretty funny. Uh, they've got Yosemite Sam and Jonah Hex. They've got Elmer Fudd and Batman. They did... Bugs and Soups. No, right? no. They did Bugs, Soups. Bunny, and Legion of Superheroes. Nice. Uh, Soups didn't get one. No? No, he did not. Uh, they Soups did doesn't need one. He's Soup. Uh. He doesn't. He's, he really doesn't. And uh, they they also did that giant crossover, the 100-page one, remember? Okay, so that's... That's the, the one where the Soups one is. Yeah, they did a huge 100-page one with all the characters. But And then... Oh, man, trying to remember all of these, but I believe they did a <laughs> Tasmanian <laughs> Devil Wonder Woman. I just thought of something really cool. What if Green Lantern... Where's Daffy Duck? Yeah, where's Daffy Duck? Where is Daffy Duck? Where is he? He was in the main oh, one. Daffy like didn't that. get a main no, one, dude. No, but I don't think a lot of them did. Like, all right, so the Looney Tunes are. But you had like Bugs. You had Marvin Martian. Ooh, you know what? I've got a fun fact for you. Do you watch American Dad? Yes. Yes. See, I'm really good at voice actors. Do you know who does the voice of Klaus? The fish. Oh, I don't know who does Klaus. Daffy Duck. Really? What? That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> Are you serious? Dabby <laughs> Duck? Oh, wow. That's amazing. That's some crazy good talent. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool, though. DC Comics crash page. Uh, so either Joker has found it. Yeah. But uh, I just thought of something really funny for a cross crossover. Crossover. But, uh, what if Green Lantern Corps met the diamonds from Stephen Universe? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> that would be... Right, I'd be down to read it. Cartoon Network sponsored by Warner Brothers. <laughs> oh wow, that would be crazy. Oh man, comic books being a little. Oh, it just does that because mm -hmm. I have my ad block on. But I really was just legions of superheroes. Bugs, Bugs Bunny. Bunny. Yep, I think you got them all, all right. man. There's six of them. I missed one, but. It's probably a Daffy Duck one. I don't think it is. <laughs> it's got to be a Daffy Duck one. <laughs> There, there's a Daffy Duck. I have to find out now. I just can't help myself. Oh, oh Daffy, Daffy Duck, Duck plus Dead, dead man. man. Just put oh, him with the, like, the most... That would actually be hilarious. <laughs> right? The, the, the most, most psychotic, psychotic person, person with the, the most depressing, depressing person. person. It's just like, you realize this means war. You realize you can't okay, kill so that is the dead. earlier one, the Superman <laughs> and Bugs Bunny. Yeah, oh, Jonah that's has... Great, dead, dead man in Daffy Duck's body. Oh, wow. Oh, it was Lobo Roadrunner. That's oh, the one we were actually yeah, the talking about. Yeah, the one I was the talking one I about actually at first. Read. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff's <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it does, though. Yep, Bleach is, yep, that's all of them, but... I, I honestly love them. They were great. They were true to each other in each of their individual settings. They were also... It was interesting, so, like, you get to see Yosemite Sam kill people in the Justice League, or in the DC version, you know what I mean? Because it is DC. Pop it off. <laughs> or, no, it was... Yeah, no, he it was him. But there's it's they're such great series. I can't wait to get them. I'm gonna have to pick up some copies at my at the shop or wherever I can find some because they 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 were awesome. I gotta get them. <laughs> gotta have the physicals, man. Oh, those covers geez. were beautiful. Uh, I understand that. I've got a whole bunch of comics. We've even uh, you can't see it because it's on the other side of the computer, but we've wallpapered the room with comic books. <laughs> oh wow, awesome. that's awesome. Got them in their sleeves too, so they're still in mint condition. Oh, yeah. oh that's even sweet. better. Mm -hmm. That just sell the whole wall. That's right. Let's <laughs> cut it out. Tear this wall down. It's like it's be, like now it's up. already sticking to something. It's like oh, hey, just like now it's for just apply play. glue. Just apply. Glue. <laughs> That's all you need. All right. Well, I think aside from that, we're we're pretty much reaching the end here. So if there's anything you wanted to talk about specifically before we kind of wrapped up and headed off, yeah. You know, okay, uh, we, you can find us at Gung Ho Network. Uh, that is our YouTube channel that we're working on. In fact, uh, this is the, uh, got the uh, logo right there, Gung Ho Network. Oh, nice, I like that, yes. Yeah, Shauna did the uh, design of the logo for us. Uh, I'm sure you'll be able to forward them uh, on and your Actually, we can show them. Yeah. We can show them We've got as well. one as well. Even nice. better. There you go. Um, now, uh, we currently have uh, 96 subscribers, and it's... Never gone, gone down, down, it just keeps building. Just keeps we've building. only uh, had the channel in operation for a couple months now, and uh, we've got over 200 videos available. We've got Let's Plays and Time Lapses, and the channel has hit over 25,000 views, so we must be doing something right. Right, uh, right now, uh, we just did a big announcement video where we're going to be releasing a few video games over the next uh, couple weeks. We're playing uh, Game of Thrones, we're doing the entire season one of yes. Telltale the series Game of Thrones. Uh, uh, we're doing Mirror's Edge Catalyst right now, which is the sequel to Mirror's Edge 1. Uh, we're also doing Final Fantasy 15, The King's Quest, uh, which is this really cool 8-bit classic Final Fantasy game. But yet it's also a hack and slash RPG. So I'm kind of excited to delve a little bit into that. And this really cool game that we that Shauna found, it's called Soma. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's this really cool psychological terror. Um, basically, uh, our character wakes up in this weird underground facility and robots are coming to life and they have really intelligent AI that are like mimicking personalities from real life people almost like their uh, people have been their, their, their entities, their personalities, their souls yeah. almost have been trapped in these robots and they're in pain and they're scared and they're psychotic and you have to be afraid of some of them and some of them will help you and you can never tell which one is what. And it's this really, it's really messed up. It, it feels very much like Bioshock did when, when, when um, the original Bioshock, but yet it's also got uh, a little bit of the uh, psychological sphere that PT, the playable teaser for the, the Silent Hill game, uh, came out. It kind of has that aspect to it too. It's really scary. But uh, if you're looking for full series that are already available, we've got Final. We've got uh, Final Fantasy, Resident Evil Seven. We have uh, all those out. We have uh, most of the Uncharted series. Uh, we've started doing Kingdom Hearts. We're going to be doing better audio on some of the newer ones as they come out. And uh, we've got a whole lineup of games that are still coming. If you like Injustice 2, I've been posting videos, a how-to guide on certain characters and combo guides on certain characters, and I'm open to requests. If you like want me to do anything, I know actually you requested Captain Cole. Yes, I'm currently working on Captain Cole. Awesome, sweet. So that should be coming out by next week. I'm going to be putting together a, a, a more combos for him. I'm trying to get some of his potential down before I actually feel confident enough to do a video for him. I uh, understand. And uh, really, the big ones that we're excited for would be uh, Spider-Man PS4. Yes. Oh my goodness! The game play of that. Uh, we're going to be doing the classic Sonic games, which drop yes. next month. Those are great awesome. playable yeah, games. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Uh, we're also going to be tackling uh, South Park. We're going to be tackling uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Oh, I'm actually yes. a pretty good player. I've gotten a lot of lucky kills on some other YouTube channels. <laughs> with my footage. So uh, you're going to see a lot of cool things with that as well. And we just, the, the list is never ending. Sean has got new time lapses coming up. In fact, you can even see how she's been doing her new line of stickers. Oh, you must have in the next few days. Awesome. And 
Also, if you guys have requests, any of the fandom, any of the viewers, if they have any requests for really cool pieces that you want me to draw, then I am taking requests to do those. And so, those are the things that are coming out in the immediate months to come, and there is more, of course, planned. We have a whole calendar of things lined up. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. That's so That's awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. Please stay in touch with us and send us that content. We would love to push you guys out. We love your Sounds stuff. Great. I love the Gung Ho Network. Um, I watched some of your Soma videos, by the way, when you discovered the pizza box. Ah, the pizza! <laughs> oh, man, I love it, man. I just, I love I love you guys' stuff, yeah. so thank you so much. Cool. And uh, I'll have, have, have a good yeah. time with you. You know? Yeah, we're the ones playing. We're, we're the ones, the ones playing. playing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is part of it. Everybody. Everybody's playing. Oh, man. For sure, though, we'd, we'll definitely have to do some work. I, I definitely, uh, I've been working on some more videos too to hopefully send you for the network. Uh, I just, it's just hard to try to get the backstock of videos with that and this. As you know, juggling multiple content streams is often just. And I wish I to do so. Yeah. One of the beautiful things about this channel is that I, I. I would love to see it branch out to new content from new uh, subscribers to new creators. I, I want this to be basically a channel where you kind of like you go on uh, to Cartoon Network. There's never one show that they play. It's it's not Steven Universe all day long. Right. And you, you go to HBO, it's not the same movie all day long. I, I, I want Gung Ho Network to be a network where you can subscribe once and get multiple different types of content. We have a friend of ours, his name is Caleb. He's working on a nerdy cooking show for the channel. Uh, he should have episode one out soon. He's finishing up some of the uh, audio for that. We got a guy that's doing toy reviews. We got a guy that's going to do movie reviews. Yeah, it's we're really trying to expand as much as we can. We want it to be an open forum to creators uh so you are more than welcome as well to add any content you like as well send it our way and we will gladly put it up because i, I would like this channel to eventually be a place that's got a million subscribers and that new channel that's just starting that can't get five subscribers can post a video up and then get noticed and that's what i want I definitely understand, man. I appreciate you being that kind of, you know, yeah, community member. Thanks for member being so and, supportive. Oh yeah, it, you know, it's it's hard to find, and that's the only way to really get anywhere in this business is to be community and to be together, and, and obviously also to work hard, which you guys do. You know, we see you doing stuff all the time, every weekend, and I see you at all kinds of cons, obviously. You know, and uh, thank you so much again for coming on with us. You know, we really appreciate you, you know, being our guests and. You know, no problem. Some yeah, yeah, you guys are our Getting first guest. This, she's going to RTG, her art group, yes. for more uh, work towards comic books. And then I'm going to be here recording for the YouTube channel. Yeah, right. Nice. Yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much how it goes for us, too. Mm -hmm. Back to the pipeline. Oh, yeah. After no, this, I got to go with it. <laughs> yep, so. oh, yeah. All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap up yep. the episode with this. Uh, you know, for all our viewers, thank you so much for tuning in again for our 27th episode. Our first episode with special guest Shanna Mora and Governor Songin. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you us. so much for joining, and, uh, everybody. You know, we hope to see everyone, and uh, we hope everyone sees each other around in the Nerdverse. So check, don't forget to check out SCM Designs and the Gung Ho Network, as well as me and Leo's stuff at 3D Productions and the Blur Leo Rydell and, and the Blur Block. Guys, thank you so much again, and thanks for supporting the community as well. It's yep, been fantastic. You awesome. Thank you. Thank you, yep, guys. Absolutely. All right, we'll let you go for tonight. Thanks again so much. Yeah, thank you all. One. You'll take care. See you next time. <laughs> See you next time. There we go. And thank you guys and once thank again. thank you guys for tuning in. Don't we'll look at my information. Next week. Don't look at my information. <laughs> if you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect and we can always improve, so please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com slash 3D and get exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month.